Yes, it's eight o'clock. Um, okay. Um, welcome to Psychopathology. Um, most of you are, you know, PGY1, PGY2. And I'd like to share with me the, my approach to uh, cytopathology, uh, cytology interpretation, and like surgical pathology, it's preparation phase, different preparation, different uh, interpretation. So what is cytopathology, subspecialty of pathology, specialized making diagnosed based on scanty cells and tissue fragment obtained by minimally invasive procedure using all kinds of preparation. And first you have the thin prep, liquid preparation uh, and used for cervical, uh, anal, urine cytology, bronchial brushing, bowel duct brushing, endometrial brushing, body cavity fluid. And at Cornell, you use thin prep. At NYU, use a different company called SurePath. Uh, they're all the same. And uh, it, for CSF, it's different. You always have two, a pair of cytospins. The reason is a lot of uh, CSFs, uh, it's much better use uh, hematology stain, quick and the rest use papinicolor stain. And the um, cytopathology, it's equivalent to hematology. So surgical pathology is sections of fixed tissue. And hematology and cytopathology smears of fresh cells, the whole three-dimensional cells in sections of cells. And in a surgical pathology, it's many cells and you look for the growth pattern. In cytopathology, you have very skinny cells, so you study the individual cells and cell junction. So in cytopathology, it's like a jigsaw puzzle. You have little pieces. And you have to have a good foundation of surgical pathology so you know the whole picture so you could put the puzzles together. And surgical pathology is lymph node sections and cytopathology smears. Good morning. Thank you for reminding me. I can hear all of you. Hello? Uh, and uh, bone marrow paraffin section and bone marrow smear. Uh, so, for instance, like this small cell lung cancer, uh, we have different preparation. It smears because you smear the cells, cells are very fragile. So, you have smearing artifact. And cytospin, spin the cell, pump, making circles, and there's no. Uh, streaks, and then thin prep, liquid fixation, and pro-infusion, all the small cell uh, carcinoma, they uh, put it, uh, adhere to each other. So the one tumor have different uh, appearance based on how it's smeared. And then you have brush, you can brush bronchus, esophagus, or endometrial. And the same tumor, endometrial brushing in cytology, pap stain, look like it's very difficult to interpret. So we have cell block to make a mini uh, tissue block. Then it's much easier to interpret this endometrial carcinoma. But the same patient will, when this tumor, metastatic, Cites, it looked totally different because it's very watery. The cells are up, up in bad water, so become very round and puffy. So all depending on its environment. At NYU, I use uh, direct smears 
because I hated the side, uh, efficient or turn efficient cytology to FNA. And then uh, for each sample, we use one diff quick, one ultra fast pap stain. And diff quick to check the nuclear size, background substance, medical medics from um, ultra fast pap is to lyse the red blood cell. And so, because study nuclear cytoplasmic features like HE stain. And then, uh, the red uh, side rich red because it for very bloody effusion it's very helpful to lyse all the red blood cells and before you do papineglossy so diff quick um, because a lot of pathology hate diff quick so I wrote this paper back in uh, 1992 uh, to share. Uh, the essence is in diff quick it's air dried so you uh, the the same cell looks much bigger and then the observed cell uh, so instead of looking for chromatin you look for your best friend in diff quick that's red blood cell like on the left it's one times red blood cell therefore whatever it is it's benign and the one on the right, uh, four times red blood cells. So, so the nuclear volume, it, it is malignant. And that's how I tell uh, you, you s just remember red blood cell is your best friend in DIFQUIC. And then DIFQUIC is beautiful to uh, show the background substance, like this mucin beautiful mucin, and then this soft cartilage, chondro, chondrosarcoma. And then this uh, baby yolk sac, very slimy, streaking, and then base membrane substance, very rigid adenocystic uh, carcinoma. So all those are the clues. So you're like a Sherlock Holmes, you're a clue, you're a cell detective you're going to find out the truth, detect, uh, the, solve the mystery. And then this mix oil and uh, substance and then chicken wire uh, uh, blood vessels, so mix oil liposarcoma. And then this boy substance, those are glycogen lake. It's a clue for uh, seminoma. So, because we have all those clues, that's why we could make it immediate diagnosis. For instance, like this, uh, this cell, there are a lot of collagen, a lot of medical medic stroma. Therefore, it's mesenchymal tissue, but it's a benign or malignant. Uh, look for the nucleoside with your best friend, red blood cell. Uh, and it's five times represent, therefore it's malignant, it's a sarcoma, high-grade sarcoma. That's how I learned the clues. So difficult, it's very important. And back in 1992 at Pepe Cytology Lab, uh, I and the first fellow, Eliana Alvarez, we developed ultrafast Pepsi. Basically it's, What's ultra fast Pepsi? It's like an egg is a cell. Uh, a sunny side up egg is diff quick. And then um, a hard boiled egg is like the or a per, uh, formalin fixed tissue. And then um, Pepinicolau, traditional Pepinicolau is Porsche egg. An HE cell block or HE section is half for A. So uh, ultra fast pap stay is like diff quick. Uh, and then you make the cells transparent again and then fix the alcoholic formula. And that's uh, ultra fast pap stay. So everything you, you know. In HE can be applied to ultra fast pap stain because it also has a little bit formula. 
And here's the diagram I made uh, the, the difference between papineclaw stain and ultrafast pepsin. It's also bigger, uh, cilius, flatter, uh, cytoplasm are bigger, and replica cells are gone. Like this uh, renal cell carcinoma, very bloody, and then with this air dry rehydration and it become very easy to interpret and everything in focus. And subtle difference in nuclear features can be like th this cell. They're very bland and chromatin, very pale, smooth, chroma, uh, nuclear member. So it's benign. And it's malignant, the cells have prominent nucleoli, and then and this has a convoluted uh, nuclear membrane. And we know cells don't lie when they look like this, it has to be malignant. And uh, also very helpful in spin cell neoplasm, like the Mel How do I know it's melanoma? Because I melanin it, and it's very diseasive. How do I know it's carcinoid? I, because uh, uh, nucleus are salt and pepper, and very uh, bland. So, and how do I know this one's sarcoma? Because it got collagen and very ugly, uh, big, irregular chromatin, so it's sarcoma. And that's spindle cell carcinoma. So that's the secret of our trade. And I'm sharing with uh, interns, <laughs> young people, young pathologists. So here, here's a spindle cell has a weak uh, health hazard, arrangement, it's schwannoma. It could see Anthony A, Anthony B, B area in other area. And this has a very rectangular uh, nucleus, very bland. It's turned out it's uh, asper or leiomyoma. What about leiomyosarcoma? Look at the nuclei. First of all, the cells become discohesive and then the nuclear darker, irregular, so it's like my sarcoma. That's the basic of cytology. And gold pattern, we put up, uh, together a jigsaw puzzle and translate two uh, 3D cells and tissue into 2D pattern familiar to surgical pathologists. For instance, like this flashy, it's all flashy angle. Um, but actually, it's ripped off from um, this ductal proliferation. The, the in histology is a familiar uh, ductal carcinoma of the pancreas, back to back uh, ducts. And then you aspirate and you make smear become very flat. And the nuclear uh, uh, variation in size. So that's the secret. Intracytomucin, also very helpful. This has sparse mucin, it's adenocarcinoma. And this has uh, um, India in, uh, file, and it turned out to be lobular carcinoma of the breast. So in ultrafast pepsi, everything you learn in H&E, in surgical uh, applicable. And what is this? They're very decisive and they allow uh, melanin pigment. So why would you have melanin pigment? And so it's melanoma. Uh, and then also this intracytoplasmic uh, nuclear inclusion. So diagnostic for melanoma, very easy. And here's a body cavity fluid, and um, all this were done at NYU. Uh, and we, uh, um, so for, we apply uh, every body fluid afresh, 
and then we make two smears, one uh, side ridge fix, uh, side of spin. And then, um, so we have another adenal, a small cell, CA, gas signet range of leukemia. Because we don't know what we're going to get. If you get the adenocarcinoma, and then here's uh, uh, ultrafast pap state, it's easiest to interpret because cells are bigger. But if it's leukemia, um, lymphoma, uh, DIFPIC, the hematology state is superb. It, because you never know what you're going to get. So uh, do all three. It's, so here's a screen to sell carcinoma. You, you know it's screen because it's got orange and cytoplasm, it's the keratin. And then you know there's a mucinous, a lot of mucin. And this is mesothelioma, very hard cytoplasm. And um, uh, he has, has a semoma bodies and turned out to be uh, an, a serious custom. So we use a triple approach, one was at NYU, and I even give the ASC national workshop and diff quick, ultra fast pap, and cyto rich red. And diff, diff quick is for leukemia, lymphoma, um, ultra fast pap for endocarcinoma, mesothelial sarcoma, and cyto rich red to prevent 7% false negative for very uh, uh, bloody aspirin. I have all the teaching packets in my office with this workshop. And so for instance, like this uh, AML uh, leukemia, it's single different is sure the best. The PAV, uh, ultra fat are not so good. Uh, and then DIFQUIC is uh, PAV and ultra fat. This nuisance and the personal from all, every single case are the cases I personally signed out and, and documented and photographed. And here's a signet ring cell carcinoma with gastric primary. They have a quick PAP, shrinking, more shrinking, ultra fast PAP. Single cells, eccentric cytoplasm, bubbly cytoplasm. Is a uh, difficult, you know, it's some kind of mucin inside, and you, you see papillary stain in um, ultra fast cell, the nuclear are, because it's flatter, so the chromatin is uh, much less, uh, very pale. Uh, and and this uh, Indian file is small cell carcinoma of the lung. And then the uh, diff quiz shows the nuclear molding the best. And then the PAP and ultra fast PAP. And, and like a uh, squamous cell, PAP stains the best. It shows this onsophilic. Uh, uh, keratin. So it's squam cell carcinoma of lung uh, primary. Here's a semoma body. <laughs> it make PAP, ultra fast PAP. It turned out to be papercell carcinoma of ovary. And mucin is adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. It's just a lot of mucin, tons of mucin. It's a uh, uh, my scallop, border, hard bruise. Here's a negative uh, case to show the, the react mesothelial cell and uh, uh, chronic inflammation. So uh, the study 
shows stiff quick stains is best for uh, leukemia lymphoma, uh, but approximately 8% positive cases. Ultra uh, UFP stains best for adenocarcinoma, epithelial sarcoma, about 85% positive case. Cytorich refix, perhaps say cytosine, best for rare cancer cells in a very bloody effusion, about 7% of the case. So here's some uh, interesting case uh, before I uh, come in to uh, Cornell. This, uh, 40 year old Hispanic man have a little bit of fluid. And then based on this cytology, it's a reactive smith. And then the cells is some kind of carcinoma because it's a woman. So I did uh, estrogen receptor positive. So it was a larval carcinoma of the breast. And um, here's a, um, a woman with pancreatic mass. Uh, that's a iron cell tumor was the old terminology. You know, this is a well defined uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. It had the salt and pepper, and then coma uh, gran, uh, gran. So here's a uh, mesothelial cells, malignant mesothelial cells. They feature irregular nuclear contour, prominent nucleoli, and then uh, benign mesothelial cells are, you know, benign nucleus and macrophages. And this cell, I I picked this one for because I could see the long microvilli radiating out of because I was electron microscopist, long microvilli um, only happen in malignant mesothelial cells, so dense blue cytoplasm. And this is uh, 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 sorry. And then adenocarcinoma, delicate cytoplasm, and cytoplasm mucin. So they look totally different. And here's a, a case. I love this case because it looks like farifosis. Um For young people, <laughs> maybe you never heard of farifosis here. Uh, it's very long, hairy uh, microvilli. And then you show uh, carotenin EMA, it highlight the only the microvilli cell membrane. It, it's a beautiful case of mesothelioma. And I had a, a rare case of uh, a woman with no history of cancer, but with pro-refusion. In, uh, in, uh, and then, Numerous cells after centrifuge, but cells are benign looking. And then, um, and the follow up was benign in mesothelial hyperplasia. So I thought it's kind of interesting. And then the pelvic wash from a patient with a tumor with this rhabdoid cells. And then it turned out to be this rhabdoid cells of not endometrium of uterine wall. So I thought it was kind of interesting. And so I'm sharing with you. Here's a 32 year old woman with ascites. And then with all this uh, clusters of tumor cells, and then and they're uh, positive uh, with desmin, cytokeratin, bimentum, cell block. So it was. That's small plastic, small round cell tumor of abdomen. I, I, here's an AML from a man with ascites, and that shows the quick is the best. And this is my first case of primary fusion lymphoma. Back then, I had to uh, um, patient with AIDS, and then 
the cells. I had to borrow the lanistin and galsixin from my old friend, uh, uh, Amy at Cornell. And this is the first case at NYU then a positive nucleus in to prove its uh, primary fusion lymphoma. And then uh, uh, um, also I had a case of uh, has a eosinophil and then a recember cell. Patient had the history of Hodgkin lymphoma. And that's why I thought it's kind of interesting show the power of cytology. It's uh, interesting because the man has a gastric polyp and then has this uh, salt and pepper cell, uh, like a, a neuroendocrine look. And the tissue follow up was uh, anocarsum with neuroendocrine features. And um, here's a abdominal abscess from a woman with screen occurrence of service. Here's the pap stain, and it has beautiful keratin, uh, uh, it's malignant keratin, it's, it's uh, cervical screen occurrence. Here's a with intra single cell inclusions and a melanin, of course, it's a melanoma, melanin pigment, and then inclusion. Here's a, a, another thing, a frequent uh, exam, seminal body in fluid is not equal to cancer. It all depending on nuclear features. Here's a case of seminal body, it's endosalpingiogosis because uh, it has seminal body but nuclear features are benign. Here's another floral pepper hyperplasia, numerous among the body, but the cells don't lie. Cells are benign. It's a, a benign floral pepper hyperplasia. When it's malignant, you know it's malignant. Here's a case of pepper cells personal. Look how ugly the cells are and the seminal body. And, and you know nuclear, I tell you biological behavior. This has to be malignant. So leukemia, lymphoma, difficult is the best. And how do you tell uh, lymphocyte from leukemia? Because lymphocyte has this uh, cytology best friend, uh, lymphoglandular bodies, leukemia stone. Yeah, also difficult express for plasma cells, plasma cell myeloma, because show the Golgi apparatus, the perinuclear half. So use different stain for different purpose. The main goal is to provide the best diagnosis for patient care. Here's a screaming cell carcinoma pro-infusion. It's uh, you need cell block because uh, it's uh, diagnostic. And, and also uh, smearing, that's how Thai cell junction to hold together. It's about that fluid and in cytospin, you know, it's some kind of about that. You don't know whether it's uh, malignant, but when you do direct smear, the cells fall apart, therefore, you know, it's malignant. It's follow our cholangeal carcinoma. So I share my experience in this 2003 paper, long microvilli mesothelioma conspicuous with all this hairs, sticker, hyperplasia, mesothelioma, and adenocarcinoma, and cyber side comparison. Um, here's a, another uh, picture. You have retraction halo, and the reason why the micro, uh, microvilli is so 
pronounced because one cell air dry rehydration, the retraction hair pulled the, all the villi straight and so become more con, con, uh, conspicuous. Uh, so here's a retraction halo's nature's uh, dotting pen effusion cytology for this marking flame aside with numerous tumor cells, difficult stain, uh, ultra fast PAP uh, retraction halo, and then PAP you have inflammatory cells. So it's like a dotting pen. And then the diameter of the halo is in proportion to the size of the cell cluster. For instance, like this, um, the first is uh, histocyte don't have rejection halo. Here has the retraction halo turned out to be carcinoma cells. And this has no retraction halo. It's a mesothelial cells. And so for a real case, I had the ultra fast pap. I see this retraction halo. And then the cells, there, all those cells, they Dotted for me, look at high power. I see convoluted nucleus, therefore, it's malignant. And then it's rare malignant cells. A patient had papillary cells carcinoma. And then my colleague said, You have to confirm it with cell block. So I did cell block and then P50 uh, immunostain to confirm it. So Cytorich Red was a, a very important invention because uh, it, uh, one cc Cytorich Red hemolyzed 25 microliter gross blood. So simultaneously fix the nuclear cell, lysed blood, and background protein. You can make a cell block, a nice compact cell block. No Cytorich Red on the right. Uh, side of which red on the right. And I was very grateful for the pioneer, the inventors who invented side of which red, Dr. John Maxson. Um, here, here's uh, the really old paper. Another thing, uh, innovation is tall brush and um, to I did uh, um, a lot of endometrial brushing in, at NYU to, uh, but uh, always one large side of ridge, side of spin, and then a pump compact cell block to tell whether it's peripheral endometrium or uh, what. And then, so that's really old 2001 endometrial brush biopsy. And Dr. Tao is the inventor of Cytorich Red. So uh, this... Uh. Hello, I'm Dr. Yang, a cytopathologist from NYU Medical Center. I'd like to share with you how we make smears artistic way. Here when you uh, uh, put your fine needle drop your sample at the one centimeter to the label in a very controlled fashion. And then you take a, a spreader slide, you hold it like this, and then you make a nice smear in an oval fashion. And if you have a lot of uh, specimen, you can split it in a dab technique by doing one, two, three, and then turn it over. You could make four slides. For this way, you could have four beautiful smear. And once you practice, you'll get to know it.
and then make a smear. That's it. Hello, I'm Dr. Yang. So, uh, any questions? I'm ready for questions. Hello? Hi, we're here. I'm just checking the chat. I don't see any questions yet. Um, okay. I talk too anyone... fast. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, I open all the... Any questions? The, the two video didn't do so well. Let me, let me do the video again. Say to read sailing to this square. This is why we said park and, and your radiology. Tap water, always label. So one big mistake. Touch the needle, get air in. Um, always put two, two sides, square it with the air, just by how they look, I already know it's coming much Look how shiny they're they're coming. You make a gross diagnosis. Second nodule. This one's more fast. Make a very thick, um, bloody smear. And then Dr. Messina now is doing the French technique with our section. See, look how bloody it is. Who's next lamp? Make it dry faster. You do the routine. And we move it up and down so it's even faster. Did the doctor tell you which ones he wanted? He lost enough. Now it's red and the blue. And 15 dips. Just one. Yeah, but, yeah, I read all the stuff that you didn't have. I don't know what that means. I should wait. Um, I still have a slide. Secret of onsite assessment is gross diagnosis. You already know what it is before you even stay. Let me try. Um, a site of rich red preservative, normal saline, a packed jar, and some bloody smears. Get the saline, put the slides in. The time, 30 seconds. Close the lid, move the slides, discard. Be 
this one, the bloody cream set ways. Let's send in. Once. Rinse it twice. Add side to retread. Keep the cap well. This is the end product. All the blood has been humalized. Uh, hi, Dr. Yang. I have a question. Hi. Yeah, sure. Hi, I'm one of the new first years and I kind of did a quick Google search on who you are, your career. And yeah. uh, I'm quite like wowed by uh, what you've done. I have a basic question um, sure. in terms of rapid onsite evaluation in terms yeah. of what else can be improved. You, it seems like you shortened the pap stain from 20 minutes to 90 seconds. Yes. And thus allowing for the creation of rapid onsite evaluation. Uh, is there yeah. any yes. new, are yes. there any more hurdles anymore? Well, um, um, the, I, it worked out very well for me. Um, but uh, I don't know why it's not so popular. I don't know. Uh, but, but my entire career, uh, I must say, is... Um, uh, ultra fast perhaps thing. and uh, I'm willing to share all my knowledge to all of you um, it doesn't uh, I think once I I realize the reason why it's not popular in the hospital is because Perhaps they, uh, once they air dry the smear, they did not uh, put it very carefully seal in a uh, plastic seal and not to be contaminated with any water moisture uh, from the wet preparation. It has to be absolutely dry. And only once in the lab, the uh, cytotech and seal it, then it will always be beautiful. But if the uh, moisture got in, it's like Kodak uh, film, the light got in, everything will be ruined. So that's the only reason I think it, why it wasn't popular because Maybe they, they're very excited to try and then they come out terrible. And, and uh, uh, therefore now I tell everybody how important it is to, to, uh, to keep it very dry. And, and that's all, it's very straightforward. It's very easy, you know. And, and I must say, I had a wonderful career. <laughs> I enjoy cytopathology very, very much. And um, it's very rewarding. It, it's the only subspecialty in cytology, uh, in pathology, you have patient, direct patient contact. It's very rewarding. Um, I used to do a lot of breast f and &A before the core, core biopsy. And, uh, and a, pa a patient is so grateful when you tell them it's fibroadenoma and uh, carcinoma. If it's carcinoma, they're still grateful because I, I have the opportunity to tell them, oh, it's, it's so small, you should be, uh, thank your doctor to, you, you'll be fine. Uh, you know, I used to get all kinds of uh, gifts 
from the patient for breast. But it's a different story with thyroid. Nobody cares about thyroid um, because they don't even know they have a thyroid. But, it, but it's very ex exciting for certain people like me. I like adventure. I like to have fun. And cytopathology is so much fun. And it's like wow, wow. West, uh, there's a lot of room for uh, innovation, and so <laughs> that's uh, any. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you, Doctor Yang. That was very uh, enlightening. Thank you. Yeah. The um. But, the, but, but I must emphasize this is my personal experience and, and you know, whatever you decide to do, I'm sure we all be fine. But I sure had so much fun in cytology. I did not start medical school until I was 40 years old. My daughter was five years old. My son was 12 years old. Now I'm 76, and, and, and this may be my last lecture. Uh, uh, yeah, there, uh, there's one more on finding aspiration on Thursday, but I'm, I'm thrilled that it will be recorded, and so it will be shared forever for those who, who are interested. Um, I, I think cytopathology is for um, people, uh, pathologists who loves patient, who loves to take care of the patient, who love uh, you know, the the challenges of unknown. Uh, like you're a cell detective, you know nothing, and then you try to figure out the the clues, the answers, and then you feel so good. And just use every everything you know. Okay, any more questions? I talk too fast. <laughs> So, I want to say no more questions. Thank you. Uh, you really sold me on Saito. Thank you so much. Thank you, okay. Dr. Yang. I don't see anything in the chat. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, see you all on Thursday. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you.